I'm sorry, folks, for being all rugged up today, but it's been a while since I've been a local, so I'm still thawing out. It's freezing. Um, I'm replacing David Ede, who you would have seen on the program as well, my colleague. Um, but I spend my time working with the public sector across Australia and New Zealand, particularly looking at information and process-related challenges. Um, and when I started thinking about, you know, planning for today's session, my mind went back to what had kind of influenced, influenced us to come on this journey to where we're at a session like this today and what had kind of played a part in that, what we've all seen. And I remember back to when Obama first came in and announced about a transparent government. A lot of you will remember um, this speech and the publicity that went out about it. And I remember at the time occasionally being a pessimist, thinking, you know, you could knock me over with a feather at that notion. Um, it takes a lot of courage to come out and say we're going to be different, we'll be a different administration, we'll be open, we'll give you more visibility on what's going on. And I remember thinking, you know, from the people that have almost patented the phrases like on need to know basis and it's confidential and top secret, you know, it, it was a radical change. Um, and part of that had kind of a cascading effect then as well, you know, what we saw locally, even things like going from freedom of information, which is really a closed door practice, you know, knock on my door and I might give you information, more to proactive disclosure where we'll make things known to you. You can come and look and find and discover for yourself and then inquire if there's, if there's a gap. You know, it's a big change for government. It's a lot of work to do behind the scenes to operate in this mode and have confidence that you're not going to do the wrong thing or inadvertently expose things that could have you know a public safety or a risk factor to them um, I remember thinking as well you know there's been a lot of change around you know push for open source we saw that kind of emerge and it had the vendor community in a bit of a scramble you know we saw things like software as a service emerge Apple and invention of smart devices smartphones and so on making it a lot more accessible um, for people to get to information faster you know, and, and demand that you make information available as well. And things like austerity measures, you know, they're all challenges. Put stuff online, be more open, you know, give services to the front end, there's no money for this, um, it is a real tricky problem, you know, looking at how we can redeploy funds or um, look at taking advantage of things like um, non-government organisations and the channel to do more work for you rather than you having to do and be in charge of everything yourselves. Um, and I kind of thought as well, you know, this is kind of the cliff notes of our times, you know, back in school when you might have been putting together an essay, some of us might have looked at cliff notes. I never did that, um, but, you know, it's out there. And it's kind of like the head start for you now with all of these, you know, online software as a service products and so forth. They're a real head start to getting a white open box and having to develop things for yourself. I thought about then, you know, demand and how how devices, how people are now demanding new things. Things like the evolution of an app store, like what a clever strategy, a clever marketing strategy for an organisation who made devices that could then tap into a whole community of anyone who could develop an app and, and they're smart and they're for little things, they're not for everything. I can get an app to get a taxi, I can get an app to look up you know, people in my area who might have an interest of a similar thing. So it's an interesting change, an interesting switch. You know, will we see, uh, you know, uh, instead of the enter key now, will we see that, you know, connect to cloud, put my documents online? Potentially we will. Um, this one I thought was really interesting in particular um, with human services. I don't know if any of you are familiar with um, human services having apps online now. I don't know, have you folks seen it? I think it's a really courageous and interesting shift that a lot of the development for human services in this case is putting apps out so you can connect and get services and self-serve much faster now um, rather than having to go into a shop front. Um, things like uploading, seeing my pay payment history, communicating online. And I think any time an organisation does this, you can expect things like this to happen. So sometimes the thumbs up might be inverted, it might be thumbs down you'll get feedback and you'll have to be prepared to respond very rapidly um, to solving community feedback. Um, 
it's, it's not about failure, it's about really then understanding how people are using the things that you're putting out there and then what they want next. Um, and I think we just have to be prepared for that. Um, I think, you know, the next avenue around change is probably the hardest piece um, when you start tapping into these things that technology enable. And um, we've seen, particularly um, as a specialist in public sector, a real change around what, um, what challenges are, are being focused on. And I think areas like citizen-centric services, how we actually deliver things to the public that are meaningful to them, that are helpful to them and solve real problems. How we actually move from perhaps um, looking at outputs um, to outcomes and the performance of those. And then also thinking about productivity and innovation and doing the next thing, not always the same things. Um, the, my colleagues and I are deeply affected by this. You know, we really spend a lot of time thinking about how we can respond to this, otherwise we'd be out of business. Um, and essentially we have to fast forward ourselves and, and get even more ahead um, to help provide solutions that will meet those needs. Um, Part of that comes down to, you know, being flexible, not asking you to come on a monolithic journey where it costs millions and millions of dollars and takes years and years and years to do the things that you want to get done today. Um, and they need to be mobile and visible and accessible and light and you don't need to go on a training course to know what to do, things like that. Um, but when we're developing products, we also have to be cognizant of the things that you face and the implications of policies and guidelines and frameworks um, that affect the decisions and the choices that you can then implement and make. A lot of those highlight um, some real common concerns around security, business continuity, governance, um, and a range of these challenges that you're all familiar with, but now it's in a different paradigm. As soon as you're using, say, a technology that's in the cloud, you know, how do these things fit into that? How do we give certainty and clarity on what's going to happen, what our risk is, and be really certain that we're not going to do the wrong things? Um, when we're developing products, and part of our strategy is really around looking at how do we bite off bits of the challenge? And we've really chosen to look at a couple of um, key areas around connected government. How we help organisations share content out of the organisation in a safe, secure way. How they get content back into the organisation. How we collaborate together, knowing that we're protected, it's safe and it's easy. We're not running around with things like thumb drives or emailing each other or having couriers these days much more um, rapid and people look for those ways to do that work now. You know, they find ways to share, they find ways to do things that break policy, but they just need to get work done. So we need to be cognizant of that as well. Um, you know, an example of this, um, one of our organisations that we do a lot of work with in New South Wales, um, transport. You know, there's Department of Transport, there's Rose and Maritime Safety, there's the ministers, and they're all sharing all day long. It's really hard when you go through a machine of government shift, the tech at the back end hasn't caught up, you haven't quite consolidated, you're not all on the same system, but you need to work together. How do you do it? It's a really big challenge. So we've looked at you know, breaking this down and solving and chunking off these challenges. And part of that, um, so I mentioned transport, looking at organisations like police um, in the UK, Sussex Police, dealing with auditors, federal agencies who um, request not to be named at this stage, which I'm sure will be happy to talk with you offline, dealing with lawyers or getting external counsel on things. Um, and it's uh, the transport safety regulator in New South Wales dealing with national rail um, and safety regulator. So everyone has a need to do this. I think you'd be surprised if you looked internally in your own organisations how many people um, and how many stakeholders or other organisations you actually deal with. Um, so what could it look like from your document record keeping system or from a key system that you use with information, being able to invite people via email in a secure way to actually connect to that information in a really simple kind of no, no learning, no training environment where they can then see and access that information and upload information that they want to give back to you and have it essentially synchronised back down to the, the originating system. 
and knowing what's going on. So if I left the organisation, um, my colleague who then becomes me, wouldn't that be a horrific idea, um, can then see and know I had shares going on. I had relationships with people, we had dialogue and they had information and they can then continue going rather than finding out there's a whole bunch of relationships down the track that I'm not keeping up to date or that aren't aware of what's going on. Um, and we wanted to take the idea further than just sharing and thinking about how people work together with processes. It's not just documents that we send out. The only reason why I give someone else something is because they've got something to do or they need to think about it. Um, so we wanted to give more structure around how organisations would work with their systems with this kind of interface in between, this light way of connecting without needing a massive gateway project. Um, we wanted it to be familiar like a FedEx where I know where things are at, I can see where my parcel is. If I'm sending information out for input, I want to know that someone's working on it, I can see that they're going to meet my time, I'm going to meet my SLAs. Um, so giving that continued visibility outside the organisation and knowing where things are at. And I kind of wanted to finish on this notion of courage and it, it is um, something to be courageous to try new things and to bring new ideas into an organisation, to be challenged and be prepared to find the answers, to go forward. And I was kind of thinking in my head, you know, it's a bit like Survivor and it doesn't matter if you've never watched a show. If you imagine it's Office Survivor and we've got a challenge, you're going to, you know, bust a gut to get there and solve it and get through to the next round. And it's kind of similar with these challenges as well. You know, you won't necessarily have all the answers at the beginning, um, but it's important to have the questions so that when you see this with a lot of crossed arms and... I often get challenged with, we'll never, you won't, we won't, you know, it will never happen here. Um, it's surprising when you talk to the pockets who deal with security in the organisation, um, the pockets that deal with service delivery, how we won't is suddenly, how can we? What could we? Why wouldn't we? And putting the challenge back onto the organisation to have confidence to try new things, to consider risk, absolutely, but to be open-minded about what could be done and have more of that glass half full approach and attitude, <coughs> excuse me, rather than the opposite of that. So those were the ideas that I wanted to share with you today. Um, and I really look forward to hearing from you folks as well, some of the challenges that you've had and um, perhaps talking about different approaches that we've seen as well. So thank you very much.